And good evening. Welcome to tonight's broadcast of VRS and VRS Hero Program. I'm your host, uh, George Pardos, and hopefully uh, you guys can hear me okay. Uh, let me know if you... Um, for those of you that uh, are uh, not familiar or familiar, uh, Louis Simmons uh, passed away a few days ago. And for those that you know, follow me and, you know, I'm a big West side, I, West side fan disciple. Um, I've, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the story of how I met Louie and how the, you know, the first time I ever met him. And so in 1988, I was wrestling for the Marine Corps and, um, you know, sports in 88 were a lot different than they are now. They, they just aren't, you know, they, they, they're not, everybody didn't have specialized coaching, uh, there were, you know, people didn't know what the difference between GPP and SPP were. Um, you know, you basically, uh, you know, nobody knew what the conjugate method was or any of that. So in 88, um, I, I go back on to, you know, I, I go to the all Marine team and I didn't have, we didn't have a strength coach. Now, you know, back then, you know, you would just spend, basically spend your time, you know, just you know, if you wanted to get strong or whatever, you would, you know, basically just do, uh, you know, bench, um, you know, um, deadlift and, and squat. And, and a lot of people didn't even do those. I mean, they just, you know, you, we used to call them sort of bench a lot. So I come home and I get it. I go over to West side and, um, this is when Louis was over on Demerston Briggs and he, says to, you know, I said to him, Hey, Louis, I said, you know, I'm, I'm wrestling for the Marine Corps. Um, we don't have a coach. Uh, can you show me some things to help with, with our program? And Louis being, you know, Louis is just magnanimous. And, and, it, and the thing about it is you've ever met him. He is one of the kindest people you you'll ever, you'll ever get a chance to meet. He's, you know, as, as good of a coach as he is and can be, he really is very kind. I mean, he's, a, you know, a good, you know, just a good human. So I go over there and I, you know, I talk to him and I go, hey, listen, um, you know, I need some help. I need, uh, you know, I need to, you know, um, um, you know, can uh, the um, just basically, um, you know, can you help, you know, help out? And so he gives me, you know, he walks me through, I, you know, at that point he, he was getting me to do six sets of triples, uh, you know, and do some volume training on off days and it helped. And, and, and over the years when I went to, uh, you know, went to school at Ohio state, helped me out. And as a result, over the years, I become a much, you know, I, I was a good, better lifter. Um, and, he was, he just was always a good guy. And it, and it's a very sad loss because there was, you know, what we found out later on, and I got to tell you this, this is what's funny about it. We were all his guinea pigs. We were his guinea pigs. He was um, trying, you know, he was trying out stuff on us to see how it worked out. And, you know, so for those that, you know, that, uh, are, you know, are not familiar with him, um, you know, that, uh, you know, he, he was a, a, a big fan of the Russians, the Soviet method and the Soviet method basically says, you know, you lift heavy weights, um, you know, for 21 days, you train at about 90, 95%. And that's the, the most you can do. And then at, uh, um, you know, and then you, you back off a of training and you go, you know, you do interval and progression and Louis was, you know, was just a master of that. And he would try different things. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. And, you know, one of the guys that I trained with over there was a guy by the name of Chuck Vocapool, who's, you know, at one time was pound for pound, the strongest man in the world. Um, he's the only person I've ever seen that has squatted 1400 with bands in practice um, in a, in a meet, he got 1200 and he, uh, you know, just basically he's considered one of the, the great, greatest lifters ever. Um, I, you know, I got a chance to, you know, meet Matt Dimmel 
um, who was one of the first guys to ever bench, you know, to squat a thousand pounds. And now, you know, and over the years, uh, you know, powerlifting has become completely different. Um, I'll give you an example. There's a guy by the name of Bill Gillespie this week that just, I, I mean, not this week. Um, he's 62 years old and benched 1,129 pounds. In March of 1985 was the very first, um, the very first person, Ted Arcidi was the very first person to ever bench 705 pounds. And he did it with an Inzer one-ply shirt. And so the the shirts that you wear now, they're two-ply, they're made out of, uh, you know, the, this material that it can add 200, 300 pounds to your bench. And what Louis would do, and, and this is why it's important to, to, you know, why the West Side Book of Methods, it, there's one right behind me, um, why it's important to, to understand a lot of things about what training is. Most of us, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I make fun of all the time is I make fun of the McTrainers. And the McTrainers are the guys that uh, you go in a, in, a, in, a, in a gym and you see them and they're like, uh, trainer. And they're walking around with a cup of coffee. And if I ever, you know, if I had a gym and you walked around with a cup of coffee as a trainer, I, I'd smack the shit out of you um, because you're not paying attention to what your your athletes are doing. And the problem has been is that recently, well, not recently, but with Instagram, with YouTube, with Facebook, a lot of these videos that are being plastered down there, you don't know if they're real or not. Um, you know, there's there's guys that are, you know, posting some videos out there of them benching. What look? I can't even tell you what they're benching anymore because the you know the the with the rubber plates, the bumper plates. I can't tell if it's a forty five pound plate or a ten pound plate. I th I saw a guy benching what I thought was four hundred five because he had, but it turned out to be take forty aside forty it was a hundred pounds and it the the bumper plates were ten pounds each, and I was like, I you know you can't tell anymore. But he was doing it to make it look like he was benching a lot more. And there's a, you know, there's a few of them out there. There's you know people that are doing that, and so what what Louis was always about was you train the way you lift. And, and I, I know that doesn't seem like a lot. Um, and so you, you can't, you know, the, you know, one of the things that he, you know, used to get people on were the theoretical maxes and it doesn't exist. I, I'll give you an example. I've seen guys rep 425 pounds for six reps and they can't get up 485 and volume does not equal strength. And guys go, you know, big isn't big, strong is strong. And Louis was about, you know, weak things break. And if you really think about it, weak things break. It, it, it's not just about being in the gym. It's about life as well. Because a lot of the Louisisms was that, you know, he would say, uh, don't have a hundred pair, a hundred dollar pair of shoes in a 10 cent squat. Because guys would come to the in the gym with all this gear and they would look, you know, fantastic and, and couldn't lift. And there's other guys that, you know, you, you look at Jason Coker, um, you know, who looked like a, a, you know, a garden gnome that should be eating kids underneath a bridge and at 198 pounds, you know, bench 903 pounds world record. So, and, and, you know, strong is strong and you can't be strong lifting light weights. And so, one day, um, my best squat ever, I, I, I have a hard time squatting. I, I've just never been a good, I, I should say that. My squat was never at the top end of my weight class. It just, it, it just wasn't. It was on the average. My deadlift has still been, and to this day, is one of the best ever. Um, in, you know, in the weight class, I mean, I, I was very good at, at a deadlift. I was, you know, I have a strong back, strong hips, um, strong core. I, I could do 685, um, you know, with three lights. I mean, I, I, I 685, 690, I, I, I could get it at my best. One day he says, I want you to try 740. I'm like, Louie, I'm like, I can't, I've never done 740 before. I've never even, you know, 
he says, well, listen, I, what I want you to do is I want you to get under the bar. I want you to get do 740. I want you to do it on a high squat. I, I don't even want you to get, you know, we're going to spot you off the monolith. Um, and we're going to do off a high box. And the high box is maybe it's, it's even a half, it's like a half squat. And I, I get, you know, now mind you, Louis is spotting me. Christian is, I have good spotters. Christian is spotting me. I have really good spotters on there. So if something was to go wrong, they got me. So I get 745 and I'm going to tell you, it felt like, um, it, those extra 50 pounds, uh, yeah, I mean, light reps is to tone up. I mean, it, it, it is. I mean, they're, you know, heavy reps, if you want to be strong. And, and here's the thing. People think that looking muscular is strong. Um, you take a look at, at you know, Tasha Lakala, um, God, I have her heart. Uh, the, the strongest man in the world, he does not look like a power lifter. He does not look like the strongest man. He's got a big gut you know, harms doesn't look, you know, being muscular does not equate to strength. Um, you know, being strong equates to strength. Um, you look at, uh, Alexia, you know, the first guy to ever clean and jerk 500, he did not look like he looked like a power lifter now. And then on the, the counter side of that, you have, uh, a guy like Pisarenko who was built. So it comes in all sizes, but strong is strong, but I get 745 on my back. And it, I felt like it was all the weight in the world. I mean, it was a lot of weight. My training phase, my training range in the squats was in the 500s um, when I squatted. Now, when I was at, a, you know, when I was wrestling, it was in the 400s to 450 to 475. I wasn't trying to do heavy, you know, when during the season, but in the off season, I would do more. So I got 745. I come down, get on the box, come off the box. And it took, and I literally, I, I put a racket and I was about to go in the corner and go in the fetal position, but he wanted to show me something. He said, George, that's the weight you have to be able to do in your weight class to be competitive. And I was like, I, you know, and part of me just said, mm. and then I realized that I was just never going to be um, a power lifter. I mean, I was never going to be competitive enough to be a power lifter. Um, the same thing with my bench. My bench was at, at best I ever got was 415 pounds. Um, it was never going to be competitive. Now my deadlift was 705. Um, that was good. It wasn't great. Um, uh, but it was good enough for what I wanted to be. And the point was Louis made you try things to make you better. Um, you know, uh, even last year, you know, I was doing, you know, um, I was doing triples, uh, you know, with, you know, with 405 off the high, off the high, uh, high rack. Um, and, or, you know, they call them pin pulls. You, you, you start higher on the rack and you, you pull higher weight. The point of it is that Louis wanted to make you better. And by making you want to be better, you got better. And if, and if you don't have somebody in your corner to push you, you you're never going to, you're never going to be better. Um, it, it, it's a, it's, it's something that as I've gotten older have realized is that you, you need coaching. Um, and the, the thing about it was even now um, I don't have, I mean, even to the last year, I mean, and I still have, you know, I was spoiled. You know, one of the things is that I'm spoiled. Um, my two coaches that I consider, well, I three coaches really, or, you know, people that I trained with, one of them is a UFC Hall of Famer, other one's an Olympic silver medalist, and third is Louis Simmons. And so whenever I had a question about training, those are the people that I went to. And, and let me tell you, if a coach, there's no such thing – as a guy that knows everything, um, you know, even Louis would go to other people to ask him questions. Hey, you know, what do you do about this? And, you know, the, and the, one of the things that, you know, he was always talking about was, what was the conjugate method. And people think that the only thing you need to do is lift um, bench squat and deadlift and that's it. No, 
you'd have to do good mornings. You'd have to do back raises. You'd have to do, you know, the, the, the hyper back machine. Um, you know, you'd have to do tricep extensions. And basically you want to be strong through the whole lift. And so, you know, when you were at Westside, you, you know, in the bench press, you might only bench once every two weeks. Um, a lot of the other times was doing auxiliary work. Um, and it's the same thing with, you know, deadlift. You weren't deadlifting every day or, I mean, you know, three times a week or, you know, you weren't doing bench squat and deadlift. You were doing the main lifts three days a week. But the other days you were doing auxiliary work. You were doing good mornings. You were doing, you know, um, you know, high band. You were doing band work. You were doing, you know, wheelbarrow pulls. You were doing, you know, farmer's carry. You were doing, you know. And so what his approach was that he wanted you to be good throughout the whole lift because as he said uh, you know it, there's it's not good to be strong in the wrong exercises and, and that holds true and it's the same thing with what i think has happened now in training and in and in power lifting and in in other sports is there's so much information thrown at you that you don't know what what, you know, what is real and what isn't, you know, there's guys out there that say, you know, um, you know, there's, I'll give you a prime example. There's a guy out there named Sean Baker. Um, he's a doc, Dr. Sean Baker. He advocates for the carnivore diet. Now he's been on, you know, he's talked you know, Joe Rogan has been on it. Uh, you know, Chuck Vogelpohl has been on it. A lot of people have done it and it clears out a lot of your gut bacteria. So, um, there are people that have been on type two diabetes that have gotten on it, that have gotten off of diabetic medicine because it regulates your system. Um, after you're on it for about three, usually you're on it for about two to three months and, you know, it clears out a lot of the, um, it, it, it clears out a lot of the, you know, the, the junk in your system, basically. Um, because you can't absorb that much protein and so it just flushes through you. But the, the point of it, the, the point of the, the training was that you, uh, you had to understand your training. You had to understand what was good, you know, what was right training, what was wrong training. Um, you know, one of the things that he, that, that Louis did, you know, was the earthquake bar where, you know, it, it's a bamboo bar that shakes every time you put a weight on it. Well, the reason that you do that is you, um, um, yeah, it, it clears out a lot of toxins. Um, and, and you basically eat eggs, meat, and cheese, and that's it. And, and you know, and and um, you can follow him on Instagram. His name is Dr. Sean Baker. Uh, gives a lot of great, man, uh, you know, uh, experience. And, and he's against, here's the thing, he's not against vegetables, but he's against vegetarians because he's saying that diet we're not designed to be vegetarians. And he's, you know, um, he, and he's very, you know, he's very toned, very, and lifts a lot. So you go to that. And then what people are, are coming to realize is that, you know, may, there's a lot of truth to be said in that. Um, that's why the Atkins diet was so effective for a lot of people is because it's not the, there's a, you know, people that are gluten intolerant, um, that have a lot of these food allergies, a lot of them is because they're combining foods that normally we never ate before prior to the last 30 to 40 years. I'll give you a prime example. We never, we never ate, um, corn syrup was something that is new to our diet in the last 40 years. And they call it corn sugar. Now, um, we, we combine, um, you know, donuts, um, a lot of, you know, donuts are probably one of the worst foods for you, but we combine corn syrup, you know, corn syrup with hydrolyzed oils in our food. And that's not really a good combination, but one of the things that Louis used to talk about, and, you know, he, there's a lot of things that he's controversial for, you know, Louis was, talked openly with him, talked to, you know, there's episodes on with him and Joe Rogan and, and some of the other people, he was open about using testosterone. And he, I mean, Louis did almost made it to 75 years old. And he was a, um, he was an, um, he was a, um, 
Um, he was a um, he was a big advocate on um, using um, um, he was a big advocate on using you know testosterone using um, you know steroids. And, and it's not that steroids were, you know, are, uh, you magically get on steroids and all of a sudden you're going to be strong. I mean, you got to do the work, but he was a big advocate of that. And a lot of people, you know, might get on him about that, but he's like, well, wait a second. Your, your body functions better on testosterone than it does without it. Um, or if you have low testosterone levels, bad things happen to you. You know, people, there's a, you know, an in, there's a study, and I and I want to bring it up because it, it's very controversial, but I, you know I'll, I'll give you the the short version of it that people are lower, you know, that more people commit suicide, um, 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 and um, that uh, people that could uh, uh, um, that. Uh, people suffer more in depression and are more suicidal on lower testosterone than on, on when they have higher testosterone levels. Um, and it's a very controversial study. So, you know, I don't want to go much more into it, but there's a lot of people that have said that, you know, in, in men, especially, um, if you have lower testosterone levels, you, you have a tendency to be more, um, you have a tendency to be more, um, you know, lower testosterone is indexed to lower, you know, to higher depression levels and so on. Um, you could study that on your own. I, I'm not here to, you know, to advocate one way or another. I think that, uh, if you're a guy and you're low on testosterone, go take some, uh, nothing's, you know, but the other thing that Louis was a big proponent of, and especially with, and especially with, with, with training, was you doing training what you're doing you're going to go do at the lift um you know no one ever no one ever went to a lift or to a meet without had having to have tried that weight in practice so if you had gone to a meet you know and you benched you know you're not going to go do a weight in a meet that you haven't been familiar with in practice you're not going to automatically jump 50 pounds in a meet just because you're at a meet. So, it, you know, if you were going to bench 500 in practice, you know, you might do it off a two board. You might, you know, do it. And then, um, you know, he had periodization time. But the, the whole point of it is that everybody thinks that, you know, lifting or power lifting is for, you know, cavemen. But there's a science to, to behind it. It's just like every other sport. And you have to be strong throughout everything. And then, you know, the other thing is that, um, you know, he was a big advocate of training. I mean, he wanted you in the gym. I mean, he trained, you know, almost every day. He liked working out. And I say all of this because I think is, it is, Hattie Michelle, I, I say all of this because as I've been around more and more sports. We we seem to want to take shortcuts, and we forget that being in the gym is important. You know, being in the weight room is important. Being doing your craft is important. And I, I'll give you an example of something that I'm not a baseball fan. I, I shouldn't say that. I'm not a baseball aficionado, and I don't know baseball like a lot of other people, but. I, you look at somebody like Tony Gwynn, who is probably the best, one of the best hitters of our generation or in the last, you know, whatever, 20 years. And he spent a lot of time in the batting cage. I mean, he, you know, throwing, you know, getting off speed stuff, getting, you know, throwing, you know, getting different pitches looked at him. And he just would, you know, he hit, he was one of the greatest hitters ever. And he studied film. He studied, you know, he watched a lot of, you know, a lot of, um, he watched a lot of film. He, you know, he did a lot of, you know, situation pitching, um, you know, fastballs from 40 feet. I mean, just, you know, training. And 
the thing about it is that, you know, in order to be able to practice, you have to practice your craft. Um, it's the same thing with, you know, with Kobe Bryant and, you know, Kobe would, was ta- used to talk about, he used to get up in the morning and go in the gym at four to 5 PM, four to 5 AM in the morning. He would get an hour to an hour and a half of training it. Then he would take a break, you know, go eat breakfast and, and take a break and, you know, relax. He'd go back and he would do basically three workouts a day. Now, a lot of it is technique. I mean, basketball is, you know, a lot of shooting, um, a lot of, you know, gamesmanship is basically what he called it, you know, shooting, you know, in the corner shooting, you know, and he would do a lot of that. Well, when he did that, he said, you know, even if somebody, the, the amount of time that you put into your craft is going to pay dividends because down the road, you know, you're not going to get out work. Well, that was the same thing with, with, you know, that, that, that Louis advocated was spend time developing your craft, do a lot of um, SPP and do a lot of, you know, you got to do GPP, but you got to do a lot of SPP. And, uh, and so I think that was the one thing that I took away from Louis. And today, even, you know, one of the things that, um, I still do. And, you know, I, I was, you know, for example, um, one of the things that you do is, you know, is a volume workout. Um, you do six sets of triples and you tr- try to do them in six minutes, 45 seconds rest in between. And that will get you in, in a good shape. The The point that I, that as, as he, um, uh, there's just not that many people like Louis and Louis was the godfather of powerlifting. And, it, and it's sad because now that he's gone, there's just, you know, Dave Tate is probably the second, you know, maybe the only guy that's left like him. And, and Dave's a great guy. Um, you know, he was a West side disciple. Um, and like one of the things he always, you know, like I said, weak things break. And if you're weak, in in lifting and you're going to you know if you're weak in life you're going to break um and that happens in sports that happens in life if you're you know if you're not strong-minded you know you're going to fall to every you know little whim that comes along and that's one of the things that you know he would advocate for be strong not just in lifting be strong in the gym be strong in life and that's and that's the best lesson i think i've ever heard uh, you know i've learned from him that, you know, weak things break. That's all I got for tonight. Um, hopefully, Louie, um, you know, the world will remind, remember you as a good man. Um, I posted a picture of him and my son, and I don't think my son has any idea who he is. I mean, who he was or who he is. And and I, and I think it's going to be funny down the road that hopefully that, you know, as he gets it, you know, as he's involved in sports that, uh, you know, my son has met a lot of people. And uh, in that he's met UFC Hall of Famers, he's met you know pro athletes, and my son is like you know he has no idea who they are, um, and it, it's just kind of funny that way because he's uh, um, you know he down the road he's going to realize that you know he met a lot of these people, just not today, um, you know so. Um, I just want to do this show about Louis because it was uh, Louis was a big influence in how I trained and and you know I you know West Side has been you know like uh, you always said West Side is the best side and you know from growing up on the West Side of Columbus to lifting out of his basement to out of his garage to Demarest to uh, you know Demarest and Briggs to, you know, where he met, you know, where he moved on to uh, over there off of, uh, you know, Wilson, uh, you know, Wilson Road now. Um, and West Side doesn't look like what you expect it to do. I mean, it liter- literally looks like somebody's garage. I-, I mean, it really does. I mean, it's not a beautiful place. It's not, it doesn't look like Planet Fitness. It- it- it's not, it's not this great big gym. It's just a little cubby hole with a bunch of weights in it, but ran by one of the smartest men who's ever uh, picked up a weight. Anyway, Louis, I, you know, thank you for everything. And hopefully 
uh, your, you know, your memory will be eternal and people will remember you for the good things that you've done. Anyway, we will see you uh, tomorrow night with the uh, slumber party. Thank you for tuning in to VRS and we will see you shortly. The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment.